and we are at 20,000 feet and requ requiring assistance. Oh, jeez. This is not real life. This is not real life. Don't do anything because it's nice and steady. Oh. This is like when I played poker and I just didn't do anything and I actually won. <laughs> <laughs> If there was an emergency and the flight attendant came on asking for help, I would probably panic. <laughs> I don't know that I would be much help in that situation. Think you can land a plane in an emergency? In March, the Washington Post published a story on whether civilians could do just that. We got thousands of comments from, I know my limitations, I might fall right out of the sky, to hold my beer and watch this. The premise was this. If the two pilots flying a commercial plane were incapacitated, would a passenger with no flying experience be able to land the plane safely? Data from two surveys showed that more than 30% of respondents said they could, including nearly half of men. So here at the Washington Post, we put that idea to a test. Okay, let's get you in. Okay. Come on back. We flew to North Dakota to test the flying capabilities of civilians in a simulator modeled after an Airbus 320, which usually seats 140 to 170 passengers. In this building behind us, this is part of the University of North Dakota, which has an aerospace aviation program that teaches undergrads how to fly planes so when they graduate, they can become pilots or go into the aviation industry. We did not get that degree, but we did come here for two days to try out the simulator, and which is part of their training and part of any airline pilot's training. We tried the idea on four participants. Nervous. Alexa, who would only watch YouTube videos of landing planes. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a lot of faith in my ability to land this plane. <laughs> Until you get the seat stopped. Brett, the son of a pilot, but whose only flying experience was on video games. I've played Microsoft Flight Simulator for about a total of five hours, so, and I have no real experience in an airplane, so. Brian, a former airline pilot who had worked for a major carrier. Went to some cargo airlines. I flew some old cargo airplanes as a captain. And me, a travel reporter for The Post, who had been in the simulator for two days. Does this come with a parachute? Uh-oh. Are we moving? Are we in clouds? Papa 123, contact Minneapolis Center now, 127.5. Is this how you work the radio? Oh, what the hell? All right, uh, ready, the event has started, Brad. Are you ready to go? I am ready. Oh, jeez. Wait. Okay. Affirmative. Uh, WAPO, one, two, three. Both pilots are incapacitated. Um, I'm an offline pilot who is inside the flight deck all alone. And we are at 20,000 feet and requ requiring assistance um, from someone on the ground to kind of talk us through, talk me through and decide a, a best course of action. Nice and steady. This is like when I played poker and I just didn't do anything and I actually won. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's um, not all that similar. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'm going to move okay, it. Okay. Airliner 456. It appears Waffle is uh, flying above the, above the runway. Can you talk her down? I didn't feel confident in landing at all because I didn't want to do a nose dive down to the runway. So then I went around, but then it was, I just got back in the clouds. I'm above the runway here. All right, WAPO, one, two, three. I'm not sure we're gonna make this runway. Okay. Use your rudder pedals to stay uh, on the center line. So push left a little bit on the rudder pedal. Left? I still don't think I have the confidence. It is, it is extremely difficult, and I think you'd probably need some proper training to, in order to take control and land that aircraft. I also had auto brakes engaged. I was going to say, stop really quickly. Yeah, please. yeah, I had auto brakes medium in, involved, so. Good job. Yeah, there you go. What do you think? <laughs> I did it. You I did, did it. it. I did a thing. You did a thing? 
saw this happen in real life. And I was sitting there, and this happened again. Um, I don't think anything would change. And Minneapolis Tower, Wapa 1 to 3, we're stopping right on the runway. A little bit of left runner. But it goes back to, I think, the three main principles. Put the headset on and communicate. Don't turn autopilot off. And as Pilot Brian says, just take a minute to sip your proverbial tea and just think about it and be thoughtful before you make any moves. We stopped. <laughs> We're on the runway. Yay. We're making Yay. an ambush. I just imagined this like fiery landing and I just like didn't, <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. As soon as I saw that there was only blue above me and I could only see blue on that screen, I was like, yeah, no, there's, there's no saving this. We further reinforce the fact that it's really hard to do it by yourself. It was very much a relief to see the airline pilot was able to land the plane by himself. Even simple things like understanding uh, where an airport is, there's quite a bit of differences we saw from Brian, the professional aviator, to our subjects that we grabbed sort of from our environment here. I think there's really no comparison on their performance level. Well, I kind of look forward to my flight home because I feel smarter now. <laughs> and so I feel like when the pilot is doing certain things, I have a better sense of like when we're slowing and altitude and also when I when he's turning or he or she is turning autopilot off and then my heart might little skip a beat because I know they're going manual so now I know more whether that's for better or worse but I have the information now so I'm a little bit wiser now as a passenger. <laughs>